Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about thin wall 3D printing slicers and new features available. So what is the Arachne perimeter engine and why is it a big deal? And hasn't Simplify 3D been doing this all along? Big things to talk about, so please keep watching. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but it would have been just to complain about how Perusa Slicer is such a great program, but can't do this, or that Cura Slicer can do this, but it is a, a pain. Th Simplify 3D can do this stuff, but you have to pay for it. Well, that's all changed now. Both Cura and Perusa Slicer just came out with a big update. Both slicers are using the new Arachne Perimeter Engine. So what is the Arachne Perimeter Engine? The, the marketing spiel from Cura is that the engine allows for high quality with the ability to print stunning thin wall intricate shapes Stronger thanks to perfect line positioning and tapered geometries in corners, fast to print due to significant reduced print head movement when filling gaps. So in other words, it can vary the extrusion thickness in, in width. So it can either do thinner or it can do thicker where needed. So here's an example part where it's stepped on one side, a taper on the other, and is drafted from the bottom to the top. Previously in Cura, if, when you sliced it, it would slice the line width. Anything below the line width, and it would just ignore. And if the wall was too wide, it would put in this inefficient fill pattern even if the gap fill was off. Cura did add a print thin wall option, but it didn't work all that great and the wall quality was very low. Now with the Arachne engine, it will slice and it will make the walls the thickness that they need to be to match the model. Now this is something that Simplify has been able to do at least since 2019 with their most recent release. So coming from the world of prototyping for injection molding, I've always been designing parts with ribbing and fine features and uh, mating surfaces. And Simplify 3D has been able to recreate these parts to find enough detail, even rather large parts. I think the other slicers saw this as like a uh, rounding error or unnecessary. And they would just suggest, I use a smaller nozzle. Well, I designed a 3D printed glider. I've been into RC airplanes since I was 12 and it's actually one of the reasons I became an engineer. I call my method the solids method. It's, it's where my CAD model represents the exact solid part that I want to have printed. And this is kind of like how most 3D printed parts are designed. You design all these complex surfaces in CAD and then translate them into an STL file or a standard tessellation tessellation language. Basically it's a triangular mesh that defines the outer perimeter and the inner perimeter, defines the shape of the solid. Then the slicer takes that part, slices it into layers, and then figures out the, the pattern that the nozzle needs to take. So these triangular meshes are, are on curved surfaces. So triangle, curve, eh, there's a little variation. And uh, Simplify 3D printed these parts relatively easily. I didn't have to do a whole lot of setting changes 
in uh, the, the slicer to get really good results. Then I published the design and found out that nobody uses simplified 3D in the hobby world and that Cura is the de facto king of 3D printing right now. And I don't know why. It must be because it's free and it can kind of do this. It does work. So I learned Cura quickly and I modified my design. So it would work with it, but man, it was a pain. Variation. Cura would take this complex surface and put a really strict rule on it. You must be at least this thick or I'm going to ignore you. And that thickness was the same thickness as the wall thickness parameter. So if it wasn't thick enough, it would just leave a hole. Well, you could get around this by just thickening up all of the features and get Cura to play along. You didn't have to thicken them up by much. If you made the walls too thick, such as like you had a double wall thickness for strength, if it was too thick, sometimes it would add a gap in between or it would try to add some fill, little tick marks along the the gap between the walls, it would kind of make a mess and it would really affect the surface finish and really affect the print time. Still, overall, Cura could work, but I didn't like compromising my design just because Cura was not capable of slicing it properly. Others have designed 3D printable airplanes with other methods. There's a surface method and there's a vase method and some these innovative methods are in in many ways just a workaround to get past the incompatibilities with the slicer specifically Cura. So Perusa slicer had other issues uh, it, it, uh, that they've been correcting um, 2.4 had a big update that fixed some of the, the holes in the skin issues that they were having, but it just, it, it would make choices that didn't fit with what the part required. It just wasn't acceptable. You, you could go through and try to fix all this stuff, but it, there was just too much to fix. And to try to fix it in the geometry was again, you're trying to correct a problem with the slicer through geometry when it's really it's because the slicer is not interpreting the part correctly. So this is great. That means that uh, instead of having to bend to the requirements of the slicer, these thin wall structures can be whatever thickness you want with intolerance. Cura 5.0, 5.1, this new release, uh, the Arachne Perimeter Engine is now standard, you know, and so what did they break? Because it seems like every time Cura comes out with a, a major change, uh, a lot of their older features don't work. Well, outside before inside, so you can try to get it to print the outer perimeter first and then have it go back and print the inner stuff. In 4.11 version, it actually would do. And it actually would make really nice surfaces. Okay, another feature that doesn't seem to work in 5.0, 5.1 is the combing mode. And I really like the combing mode for being able to deal with the oozing issues of some of the materials such as the lightweight PLA, the foaming lightweight PLA. It's really cool stuff, but it has a tendency to uh, have a little extra material that comes out. And in Cura 4.11, the combing mode worked great and you could get really nice parts. So, in, in 5.1, they kind of 
they must have broke or it it's another one of the things that has has not been turned back on the other thing about Kira in 5.0 a big release it has the same printer and settings interface and I just don't like it it's very cumbersome it's hard to to, to set up and it's basically it's like if you if you put in a new printer you have to reset up all of your custom uh, materials for that new printer unless there's some other way of doing it which I haven't figured out All right, so the Arachne perimeter engine is a big step forward for Cura. So much so that Perusa Slicer just copied it. Um, Perusa 2.5 can now print all of the Swordcraft models. Yay! There were a couple updates before, but uh, this has now made it so that 2.5 Perusa works, and it's awesome. Uh, if you've never used Perusa Slicer, it's um, the the part interface is very nice, and uh, it it allows you to switch between materials and switch between printers and do some other stuff that Cura does not allow very easily. Uh, it can do all the materials and it can do them well. Uh, even the lightweight oozing stuff. The travels in Perusa Slicer are way better than in Cura. And Cura does, does stuff like this. Um, and it needed the combing mode in order to be able to fix stuff like that. Cura 5.1. And this is... Perusa Slicer 2.5. Again, Perusa Slicer 2.5. The Color Fab material. Perusa can, can do a, a really nice job of printing the Polymaker. And here, here again, this. So, this is an example of what the Cura 4.11 can do. Here is the Perusa 2.5. And unfortunately, this is what Cura 5.1 was able to print. So still a little ways to go with Cura on getting the combing mode to work again, but Perusa Slicer is already there. It can already print with without the oozing issues. So I also like the Perusa Slicer user interface and the way that they do their configuration makes a lot more sense. They have a tab for the, the print or the slicing. They have a tab for the filaments and they have a tab for the printer. If you have multiple printers, it makes it really easy to be able to switch between different brands and different types, even though you need to slice the part the same way. So another cool thing about Perusa Slicer is it will import in an INI file, which is basically, it's a configuration format for how to slice, uh, how to handle the filament and it will end up in your uh, pull down tabs as one of the selections. So I can publish an INI file for a new type of material and you can just import it into Perusa Slicer and pretty much start printing. You don't have to go through and translate a spreadsheet of configuration settings into the format like with Cura. I don't know why they do that. Another neat thing is that you can load all the parts and you can turn them on and off for what you want to print. This makes it kind of easy to keep track of what you're printing and you can print multiple parts at the same time by just turning on a couple of parts 
and arranging them and have it slice it. Perusa does a really good job of managing the slicing of multiple parts. And in fact, it actually seems like it can print multiple parts faster than it does individually. I haven't figured out why, or maybe the time estimator is wrong. You can also save the whole project as a .3MF. The fact that all of them are together and you can turn them on and off makes the 3MF file format actually kind of make sense. I did go through all of my designs to make sure that they print with these new slicer updates. I printed them on multiple printers and in many different materials. You know, I, I tweaked a couple of features to, to get exactly what I wanted. Most of them for like little skin imperfections um, and omitting some unnecessary walls. If there are any areas that I missed or something that's funny, doesn't, doesn't quite work, please let me know so I can fix it. I still like Simplify 3D for doing my injection molding prototypes. It just, it works so well and it's, it's a known entity. However, for a free slicer for doing thin walled parts, the Perusa slicer is hands down better than Cura now. It went from not being able to do it to being better than Cura in one step. Rackney perimeter engine is that big of an improvement to Perusa Slicer. And uh, I'm kind of glad they just copied it because they did it better than what Cura was doing. So um, look, look for uh, the INI files on the website. Um, links in the description below. Um, links to the materials used here, the, the Polymaker, the eSun, the Color Fab. Um, links to the, the airplanes that I print um, are, are also in the description below. Um, this, is, this is a really fun hobby and I really enjoyed designing planes and making them fly and I hope others can print them and fly them and enjoy them too. Anyways, until next time, uh, please again like and subscribe and uh, look for, for more videos to come.